Hey, so recently I've been really having a blast and having quite a bit of photographic success with what to some, to most, will be an unconventional, a surprising travel camera setup. My favorite travel camera setup. My best travel camera setup of late. However, I should clarify something. It was my favorite and my best. Not long ago, it was stolen from my car, along with a lens. They smashed the window, and because I used this camera so often, it was just on top of this, <laughs> my treasure box with all my other gear. It was, of course, covered by a towel like this, but that didn't really help. But you know what? I figured that this should not stop me from making the video since I've been itching to make it for a while anyway. I'll just be using a stand-in camera when I talk about my beloved travel camera setup. Not ideal, but that's where we are. The most important thing is that I have the images to show you. And so before I reveal this camera setup, let me show you some photos that I made with it. You see, I know some of you skeptics out there, you'll be saying this isn't a serious camera, maybe even laughing when you hear what it is. This isn't good enough, blah, 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 blah. But the proof is in the pudding. So here are some photos that I made with this camera. It's not a new camera. Some of these photos are what, three years old now? Some pretty recent. Care to take a wild guess what camera I used? What is this mysterious travel camera setup that has stolen my heart and then was stolen from me? Ladies and gentlemen, it's none other than the Sony A6400, along with two lenses. This is where I'd show it to, but since I no longer have it, it's great that there's this nice little 3D presentation thing on BH Photo. The lenses. One was the 28mm f2, this is the one that was stolen. That's actually a full frame camera lens, but on the APS-C it was the equivalent to 42 millimeters. The other lens, this Sigma 16 mil, equivalent to approximately uh, 24 mil on an APS-C sensor, and it is f1.4. So not the latest, greatest camera, right? There's actually a newer version of this little gem hitting the stores as we speak, but I'm gonna tell you why the A6400 served me so well, why I love it so much, and why it may not be necessary to get the latest version. Initially, I actually got this camera purely for YouTube videos. It has this flip screen that flips all the way up so that you can see yourself, so I naturally used it for all of my videos. Then I started to occasionally use it with this, what now seems like an ancient Sony a7 III. And I began to realize, I started thinking, hey, this little beast is pretty good. 24 megapixels, I think. That's more than enough for like 99% of photographers. Aesthetically, the APS-C still gives you pretty nice shallow depth of field. Of course, it's not quite as good in the dark as the full frame cameras, but the 16 mm Sigma is an f1.4. So that kind of compensates quite nicely for the smaller sensor in darker conditions. Once I got my hands on the Sony a7S III, which I'm using now for filming, I kind of abandoned my little a6400. But you know what? Over the years, I keep finding myself coming back to the same conclusion. I absolutely love these smaller cameras. That's why I loved this Lumix GX9 for so long, which now I can't even remember how old it is. And I've actually been using this little Lumix again since my A6400 went missing. But anyway, smaller cameras are a photographer's best friend. Why? First and foremost, because you can take them with you anywhere and everywhere. Say a Brazilian porcupine randomly appears to cross the road in a town. I wanna capture that. So small cameras like this are just great. Funny thing, because of this portability, I was actually lasting for the wildly popular but old Fuji X100V. I had some experience with an even older version of this camera and I absolutely loved it, even though feature-wise it was limited. But with that camera, I learned that 35mm or 35mm equivalent is my favorite focal length. But guess what? If you've tried to get this camera over like, what, the last year or two, you know that the uh, X100V is constantly out of stock, on back order, you can't buy them. So I thought, all right, I still want that smaller camera, but I want the APS-C sensor, so why don't I dust off my little Sony A6400 and give it another whirl? 
<laughs> and this is when I really fell in love with it. But why did I come to love this camera so much? Well, I already mentioned the size. It's more or less the size of our stand-in Lumix. I also loved the screen, which flips out like this, which I actually think is better for photos than those fully articulating screens. It's just much quicker to open up and it keeps the camera, you know, more compact. Of course, one of the absolute best things about such cameras is that they are so discreet and candid photography is my thing. During one of my journeys through the Andes, for photography, I exclusively used this camera, along with the two lenses that I mentioned. And, well, you're seeing some of the images that I made. The key thing, people were not bothered by me. They were not paying attention to me most of the time. And I can tell you that in some of these cases, they'd definitely act differently if I had a bigger camera. I think there is a psychological aspect to it too. When you're among strangers using something smaller, less attention grabbing, it feels much more casual. I'd even say friendly. So experience has shown me that always having a camera on you is just crucial. And having one that doesn't draw attention helps me in photography of people, especially strangers. It allows me to make the kind of work that I love photos of life, travel, and documentary images. Now, perhaps where I've used the Sony a6400 most and where I've really loved having a camera that I can just stick into this kind of bag or a jacket pocket. Photographing my daughter, documenting our family's journey, the memories I've captured thanks to this camera. Countless memories immortalized because it was so effortless to carry that little compact marvel with me. What about the design features, you ask? Okay, so ergonomically, not the best design, but of course you can customize the buttons. Plus, it was as easy to hold as this Lumix, more or less. It just felt right in the hand, so that made the ergonomics passable. You know what really blew me away about the little Sony? The autofocus. Even today, it's up there with some of the best. I'd set it up to where I'd sort of just touch it anywhere near the subject and just nail the focus at a very high rate. Even when I was running after my daughter, even in pretty challenging situations. Now, I imagine that you might be pretty surprised, baffled even, thinking, why did you make this video? Especially since you don't even have the camera anymore, having to use this stand-in, but I wanted to share my findings. I'm not here to promote any specific camera or brand. And like I said, there is a new, better version of the A6400, but the truth is, uh, with so many cameras just constantly coming out, there is something that you should realize. Since about three, four, maybe even five years, most photographic gear is so good that you don't even need the latest, greatest stuff anymore. So if you can get your hands on a Sony a6400 at a good price, even a second-hand one, get it. In practical terms, it's just as good for photography as most of the newer cameras of this type. Even this Lumix GX9 is pretty much good enough. The 28mm f2, which I mentioned, is a great lens. If you've got to pick one, I'd get that one. And the Sigma lens, also very solid. I'm actually still using it uh, on my full-frame camera bodies for some stuff, like time lapses in very dark situations. Though I obviously need to crop in because it's made for an APS-C sensor. Unfortunately for me, cameras are way too expensive in most of South America, so I will not be replacing my lost one just yet, but we'll see where I am down the road. That's about it. I hope that I've given you a bit of food for thought. And of course, I really want to know, have you got a camera setup that might be surprising to most of us, but also very useful? Share it. As always, if you liked this video, show me some love. Give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel.